So today's video is going to be a little different. It occurred to me the other day, I, a lot of you saw that last video when I was talking to my daughter. It, it really inspired a lot of conversations after the fact. And um, I'm a pretty big gamer. I've been gaming for uh, pretty much my entire life. Um, and I'm going to try to, to, to dispense with the acronyms here. Uh, a, a lot of people are into uh, what's called FPS, or first-person shooters. Um, that's never really been my gig. I'm more of a, a strategy game, an RTS, real-time strategy, or uh, an MMO, which is a massively multiplayer online game. Um, and I've been playing a lot of those since their inception back in 1999. In fact, I still have an active account on EverQuest, which came out in 1999. Um, what I want to do is, today I, uh, I have a little surprise for you. Uh, I wanted to do a couple gaming videos, but I wanted to tie it in with something different. So sit tight and I'll show you what we got to play with. Hang on. Alright guys, back with you. So one of the things that my daughter and I really enjoy doing when we're not actually here or working or at school or whatever we're doing, um, we love going to garage sales. And uh, every now and then I go to these garage sales and I see these little made-for-TV games, the plug-and-play ready and just go ahead and you know have fun with them. And I thought to myself, you know what, I'm going to put a few of these things together and let's see what they can actually do. See if they're actually worth the you know couple bucks I pay for them at a garage sale. Old games for sure. Uh, all retro stuff, guaranteed. Uh, in fact, a couple of them don't even have markings. So I'm going to kind of give you an overview of what we're dealing with. Now, uh, as you can see, the first one everybody knows, this is an Atari flashback. And I believe that this is actually a flashback 5. Yes, it is. Um, which is, I don't remember how many games are on this, but one thing I did like about this one, well, there's actually one thing I do like and one thing I don't like. Um, these had the Atari infrared controllers. And they, they, they feel kind of spongy, and they, they don't work that well. However, as I recall, the actual joystick ports on these things function with old-school Atari joysticks. And it turns out I happen to have a couple of them. Now, this is actually an original joystick, and this one is one of the remakes from Retrobit. Now, these are actually, you can feel it, you can hear the buttons. These are actually pretty solid. This one, it's got some issues. I need to do some restoration on it, but... We play this, we'll probably use this joystick. So, all right, moving on down to the next one in line here. The only markings I can see on this one, it says Namco on it, TV Plus Games. Uh, I noticed this one was missing the back, and as you can see, there's pretty nasty corrosion uh, down on those battery terminals. So, th this may or may not work, but once again, that's the fun of it. Joystick feels good, standard on-off. All of these are standard old-school video, so that's not really going to be a problem. All right, now the next one, this one kind of interested me. Um, it says that this is a Miss Pac-Man machine, but this is actually two pieces. And I am assuming, you can see that the base station and the regular, or the other station are separate. And it looks to me like the base station actually has an infrared wireless in it, which means that this entire controller and the games are infrared built on this. I am really curious to see if this one works. Um, this is one of those that I figure I got a 50-50 chance. Either it's going to function or it's not. But it looks pretty cool. So we're going to give that one a shot. All right, the next one we had here, once again, was missing the back off of it, as you can see. But what caught my attention to this, one of the games on here was one of my favorite games, which was called Mappy. So you had Mappy. It says Xevious on this. Uh, it says it's got Galaga. And it looks like it's got Pole Position, as well as Miss Pac-Man. So we know that, assuming the advertising is correct, it at least has five really cool games. We're going to find out. Um, once again, it was missing the back, and it's got some old batteries in there, so I'll test those before we go on, and we'll try this one out, too. Now, this next one was a mystery to me. Um, I couldn't even find this online. I searched. The only markings on this entire thing was the name Venturer on the top, and it uh, it's, it feels like a pretty decent controller. It's kind of light. Uh, I have no idea what games this is. I know it is for NTSC, though, so at least we know it's from America. Um, so we're just going to try that one out, too, and see what happens. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and get everything repositioned here. Uh, going to get Stumpy aimed over here at the TV, and we're going to uh, we'll take these in reverse order. So we'll go ahead and try the Venturer first and see what it actually does. Hang tight. Now guys, one of the first things I wanted to tell you guys about 
Um, this is that venture we're looking at right now. If somebody has a flat tip screw in that. Now, I'm not entirely certain if it came like that from the factory, but it's annoying. It's a big, fat, wide one, too, like you could put a penny in or something. But let's give it a shot. Now, on this venture, guys, you can see, um, I'm going to see if I can get Stumpy to actually focus in on that. It's pretty corroded down in here, too. You can see the contacts and the leads. Uh, I'm going to clean them up just a little bit, just to make sure we get a good contact before I put batteries in it. But uh, I figure we probably got a 50-50 chance of this one working. Not too bad odds. Hang tight. All right, folks. So what I did is um, when I first turned this on, it, we got nothing, of course. Um, so I went ahead and cracked it open. On top of all of the corrosion that was inside of it, um, you can actually see this little wire right here, uh, this little red one, where it goes down to the board underneath there was actually was actually broken off that connector, and that's actually where the power was. So what I did is I took a little jumper wire, and I went ahead and soldered a new jumper between that point down there and up here on the board where it was. Uh, and that other wire, i got to tell you, and I'm going to see if I can find it down here, it was just cheap, cheap, cheap stuff. Of course, that doesn't surprise me considering these things probably sold for $10, but it was so thin. Let's see if I can find it. Let's see if I can zoom in focus on this stuff. It was so thin that it would literally just crumble in your fingers. So, and I mean, you can, it, I don't know if Stumpy will actually pick it up, but you can see how brown that stuff is. It's just terrible. So we changed it. We'll see if that actually makes a difference. Hold on a second here. All right, guys. So since we know the venturer here was definitely toast, I went ahead and I pulled out the motherboard. Uh, now, this is actually where those two solder points were, uh, that the power were. And if I flip this open, you can actually see where the battery acid has burnt into the back of this board. So I'm thinking that it probably damaged this board pretty badly, and that's probably why this one didn't work. So you know what? We're not going to waste any more time on this. We're going to move on to the next one. Hang on. All right, guys. So our second candidate, and actually the one that I kind of hope works the best, um, is this old Namco one. Now, uh, it had some old batteries in here, as you can see. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull these out, though, and put in some fresh batteries, just to, to be sure. And then we'll plug this one up, fire it up, and see what it does. One second. Now, as I'm putting these batteries in here, guys, now, this one did not have any signs of corrosion, which is a good thing. So, hopefully that, you know, maybe somebody had been playing this recently. When they, uh, they kids play these things once or twice, they get bored with them. Uh, then they end up throwing them in the closet with the batteries in them, and two or three years later, those batteries leaked or exploded, and uh, that's when you get that uh, that wonderful thing we just saw. So, all right, so let's plug this bad boy in, and let's see what happens. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and turn this one on together. We'll see what we got. All right. So Stumpy here should be aimed at the TV so that you can see what we're seeing. Uh, and hopefully hear the audio, assuming we get anything, it had to be better than that last one, right? So, all right, here we go. Firing it up. And we do have power. Oh, we're doing something. Miss Pac-Man Collection. All right. And it sounds like we don't have any audio yet. So maybe, oh, I stand corrected. All right, so we've got five games on here. Looks like... Uh, Mappy, Galaga, Miss Pac-Man, Xenius, and Pole Position. Pole Position being my, less, my least favorite, let's give that one a shot first. You see the graphics are really pixelated. Then again, the game wasn't all that good back then either. So, alright. Oh, okay guys, here's an interesting function. So you don't use the joystick to turn, you spin the knob. Look at that. Okay, that's actually pretty darn cool. I hope you guys can see that. I'm going to show you. You turn the knob to turn the car. And I promise I do actually drive better than this in real life. So. All right. Man, I remember playing this game back in a bowling alley when I was younger. It was a lot of fun. State of the art back then. All right, well, that's full position. I believe this is a reset button. I guess it is not. Oh, menu. There's a menu button here. And we'll go down to quit. All right. Let's try Xevious. This is another one that I used to play quite a bit. Sounds right. Oh, yeah. This is actually pretty nice. Everything moves real nicely. Now, there should be 
a set or the second button, and there's your bombs. Okay. So fire bombs. This is another one I used to play quite a bit. Usually at a, a local arcade in a mall down here. As you can see, I'm considerably better at this than I am at pole position. I seem to remember there's a way to split those uh, when you get two of them together so that you can hit them both at the same time. I haven't quite got that one down yet. The joystick actually moves pretty nicely. This is pretty cool. The big old thing got to hit him in the middle. All right, well, that one's great. Let's go back to our menu here. And let's go to Miss Pac-Man. I got to tell you guys, I uh, I was a Miss Pac-Man champion. If, uh, if I got started on this game, I could probably be playing this for hours. Oh, wait, I didn't. <laughs> now, this doesn't seem to move as fast as the, uh, the arcade version of Miss Pac-Man, but it does move pretty smoothly. Stumpy this. Look at that. Yeah, I... <laughs> let's hope. We're going to pull these batteries out, put some new ones in, and uh, hope this one hadn't killed this too. Be right back with you. And as you can see, this is actually the uh, controller, and it's uh, equally disgusting. In fact, that one almost looks rusted fused. So we're going to try it out and see what we can do. All right, guys. So what I did is I went ahead and cleaned out this rust as best I could. As you can see, this is what the normal contact looks like. And as you can see, there's just a nub right there. So the odds that this is going to work are going to be kind of low. I might have to create something to create a contact point. But we're going to try it out and see what it does. So let's put some batteries in it and cross our fingers. All right, guys. So. This one was corroded away so bad here at the bottom, as you can see. Uh, what I ended up doing to compensate, you can't really see super clearly there, I actually used some washers at the base of it. And as you can see, we got a red light. So let's see what we get when we turn this thing on, shall we? All right, 
Hold on, guys. Hold on to your horses. Here we go. Oh, base came on. Miss Pac-Man Collection. Hey, we got a screen. Oh, now this looks a lot like the one we just played. Um, now let's see if we actually get any controls here. All right. So this is not an up and down thing. It's like a circle. So the controls are left to right. And you got to aim right at the controller. All right. So let's check out. Let's see if the uh, game is as good as the other one. That actually is different. That's exactly what the arcade used to say. Now, you know what I'm wondering is, let's see. Oh, this turns the same way, guys, with the turning of the knob. Oh, but you see what happens? If I, if I take the controller and point it up, it loses connectivity. You've got to be aimed right at the base station. So I guess it's kind of wireless. Let's see here. You got the aim right at the base. All right, let's go back to the menu. Yeah, and I'll tell you, that was actually my biggest complaint with the um, the Atari that we're going to get to too, is that you have to be aimed right at it, and that always drove me crazy. But all right, so it's got all the same games the other one did. Let's see if Miss Pac-Man runs a little bit. Remember in the arcade, Miss Pac-Man was always faster, and that runs about the same speed. So really, it looks like these are the exact same games with the exception of a couple of additions here. It uh, looks like Bosconian and Rally X. Oh, I remember Bosconian. had that really funky bird. There we go. Okay, let's see if I can remember how to actually play this game. Okay. Well, as you can see, I was never all that good at Bosconian. The acceleration is actually using the joystick to push up, which is a little bit challenging. The idea was you've got to shoot right down that hole to get to the center of the base. There we go. Yeah, I haven't totally forgotten what I'm doing. Not too bad. All right, so let's go and check out the only other one on here that looked different, which is Rally X. All right. All right, now while I remember this game, I really don't remember this game. I remember you had to get the flags and not hit that guy. And as I recall, yeah, there they are. Wasn't very nice game, was it? All right. So you get the idea. That's uh, that's Rally X. I do remember this one. It's one that I played quite a bit. Oh, I see the problem. I keep picking it up too far and moving away from the uh, the RF receiver there. It's in infrared direction, not RF. IR. All right. Well, don't want to do that. All right. Well, there's Bosconian. All right. So after a little bit of fixing, this system actually now works. Um, it is pretty cool. I do like the fact that the, uh, the, the base station is actually separate from this. So you can sit back and play it a little bit, but you do have to be aimed right at that infrared port. Otherwise, I mean, if I was off, you know, three or four inches, it would just quit moving up here. So, all right, well, this one's not too bad. So we'll go ahead and shut this one down. And we'll move to our next one, which is going to be this, uh, another Namco plug and play series, but it doesn't tell you too many games. Um, it looks like it might actually have Galax or uh, um, Galaxian on it. At least if that picture is correct. So I hope so. We'll find out. Hold tight. All right. Well, we got an on light briefly, but then it went out again. All right. There we go. Now we got a solid on light. All right. Okay. I was right. So, you know, when I, when I started doing these, I've been picking these up at random at different garage sales. Um, I really did not intend to pick up a couple of them that had the same games on them, so I'm glad that other one had a couple more. This one has a lot of different games, so let's take a look here. So we got Pac-Man, Galaxian, which is great, by the way. That is one of the prequels to uh, Galaga that we were talking about. Rally.
Polyex Dig Dug, which was always one of my favorites, and Bosconian again. So let's see how this thing looks. All right. All right, not too bad. Oh, that's right, I gotta forget. I don't have to aim it at the controller so I can sit back and be comfortable now. Look at Pinky trying to get me. Not bad. Actually, the controls feel real good. They move smoothly. Yeah, no problem at all. All right, so let's reset here, go back to our main. And let's see what we got next. Galaxian. Love Galaxian. Now, the fire sound sounds a little different on this one. One thing you might notice about this, the difference between this, well, one of the differences, if you'll notice on the top of my ship, the little bullet has to reappear before you can fire again. So you can't just fire repeatedly like you can in, in uh, Galaga. And I will tell you that the firing sounds on this are a little bit different than the arcade, no doubt about it. Other than that, it's still very, very fun. I love this game. And there were multiple stages, uh, different things you had to fight. It wasn't quite as advanced as, or, or uh, varied as Gorf was. That one was really, really varied, but still very good. Yeah, the controls actually move really well on this one. I'm surprised. That wasn't luck, by the way. That was pure skill for those watching. Your skill mixed with a little bit of luck. Come on. I want to get these last two. And then we'll move on. I will run into you, yellow ship. Uh-oh. Where'd the yellow ship go? Oh, that's right. I forget it. It goes back too many times. It just goes to the next level. All right. So let's reset and go to the next one. And we will... Uh, We'll go over Rally X real quick because we just saw Rally X. And actually, strangely enough, this one moves a lot better. Um, I'm willing to bet that has to do with the fact that we're not dealing with an infrared controller. Yeah, it's actually moving a lot smoother. And in this game, controlling the car is the name of the game. Alright, so we're not going to spend too long on this one because we've already seen this game. Alright, so let's go on over to the next game here, which is Dig Dug. Another game that I spent many, many hours at. And for those who don't know, the idea of this one is to get the monsters and blow them into balloons and pop them. Alternatively, you can squish them with the rocks. Here, you can dig up, get the rock, and it'll fall on them. But the rock will also squish you, so you got to be kind of careful. Another cool thing about this game is that you could actually, he's trying to get away right now. And it looks like he's gonna, ah, he cheated. All right, so that one works good. And I believe the last one on here were Bosconia. And I'm curious to hear that voice, see that uh, blast off or whatever it says. I tell you, I like the graphics better already on this one. Oh, did not say blast off. Oh, but the movement is a hundred times better. And once again, I can attribute that to the uh, the fact that we're not using that infrared controller, that's for sure. See what I mean? If the controllers work, it goes great. All right. So we're going to go ahead and cut out of this. So we know this one works. So this was a big success, too, even with the corrosion that was in here. Um, now that it's cleaned up, it's, uh, it's ready to go. It's got some great games, and they play fantastic. Looks like the um, Jack Pacific in 2003 is when this came out. So uh, if this is a you know indeed a 16-year-old machine, that's pretty good for 16 years, especially considering it had batteries exploded in it. So, All right, let's move to our next one here, our Atari. I've been looking forward to this one. Hang tight. This is fun. I like playing these games. 
You don't remember any of these games, do you? Nope. You remember Dig Dug? You ever played oh. Dig Dug? Well, you certainly know Galaga. Everybody and their granddad does. Everybody and their, does. Everybody and their gr Oh, he called me a granddad? You guys heard that. That's off camera. It will be in the final cut. All right, guys, so the Atari. Um, now, it looks like the base station actually plugs in, so no batteries for that. That's a good thing. Uh, the controllers actually look like they're in good condition. This may have been considerably better taken care of. I mean, it actually looks really good, so it probably was. Then again, you know, a lot of these games, these people will buy these, and um, when they buy them, they, they'll play them once or twice, and then they'll rot. They just sit there. So, no batteries, no explosion. That's probably why it looks so good. Now, let's check out the uh, primary controller here. Whoops, the battery rolling away. And it looks like it's a triple A's. All right, I'm going to put batteries in this and let's see what we can do. All right, guys, so I've got some brand new triple A's in here. Uh, there was no corrosion. These are clean. Both of them are. Um, let's go ahead and plug this back in here. And let's see what we can do now. This is one of those infrareds I was talking about. So you have to have the, um, the controller itself. You see there's actually an infrared there has got to be aimed at that infrared port, otherwise you'll lose connection. I hate those. First we're going to see if it works, and then we'll try out the actual Atari joystick that we've got. Hang tight, let's plug her in. All right, moment of truth, guys. Here we go. Oop. That's looking good. All right, so, well, this is interesting. So there are 10 pages of games. Oh, hey, the controller works. Now watch. I'm going to cycle down the controller, but I'm going to shift it right out of the view. See? you got to be, it's got to be able to see this infrared port. So, before we actually play these games, I'm going to plug in this retro bit. And let's see what this does. So, as you can see, it looks just like the controller. The only difference is, this has actually got the reset and all that. So, to reset the game, we'll have to hit the buttons on the actual machine itself. But, let's plug this in. See if it works. Oh, yeah, there we go. All right, so it looks like we've got 10 pages of games. Let's see. Uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, he's actually got nine full pages of games. So that's, uh, what, uh, 45. So we got 10 per, so that's 92 games. That's actually pretty good. Let's see what we got here. Um, obviously, we don't want to play all these, but there are some classics. Let's play Yars Revenge. Now, uh, for those who don't know, this was, when it first came out, it was unbelievably good. Now the idea is you gotta shoot that guy in the back there. And when he turns into a little spinny thing, he'll actually shoot at you. Alright. Now you can shoot like this, but to get the thing where you shoot back, you gotta come up here and nibble on these things. Kind of like a bug. See? And now you see this little pillar of light back here? Now I can fire the pillar of light and move out of the way. And the idea is to hit him. Now, when he does that, the best thing to do is to go through the screen. Now, this is a negative energy field. See that little torpedo? It cannot hit you while you're in the negative energy field. All right, here we go. We'll go get him this time. Oh, he got lucky. By the way, your missile will absolutely kill you. By the way, that actually sounds right. I know a big problem with some of these games is they don't sound correct, but that does. All right, so let's go ahead and let's reset our game here. And let's see, oh, oh different level selection. Oh, okay, so this is designed to specifically emulate them. That's fantastic. All right, so we're gonna use our controller here. We're gonna go back to reset. And let's go over here to the first of these to take a look and see what we got here. Now, Adventure, um, okay. There was a movie out recently, guys, called Ready Player One. And in the end of it, you actually, uh, he was playing the game Adventure. The idea of this is to find all the hidden pieces, to find, eventually find the master key and get out of the castle. Uh, but there is actually a, uh, the, one of the first Easter eggs ever that was put into this game. And it would actually display the uh, 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 creator's name, Warren Robinette, who was the one that made this game. Uh, it was the first Easter egg ever put into a game. So... 
I highly suggest you guys YouTube that. If you ever get a hold of this game, give it a shot. It's actually pretty cool. Yeah, that's that's old school view there. So, all right, let's see here. We're going to go ahead and start. And as you can see, there's not too much to this. You grab keys. This is actually a, a sword. All right, so we'll go over here. Kill the dragon. By the way, that's a barrier. You cannot pass through the barrier. And the way you hit the bonus, or excuse me, the uh, Easter egg, is you had to go into a room that was a hidden room. Oh, by the way, this, you can actually move that entire section. It allows you to pass through solid parts of the wall. So that's actually pretty cool, too. Yeah, you guys tell I actually spent a lot of time on Atari. My first game system was actually an Atari 2600, strangely enough. All right, so let's go back over here. Let's go back over here. We didn't do this yesterday. Let's go back this direction. There we go. That's where we wanted to be. So we can get across here to the other side. Ah, can't get over there. So you can see how this game could be incredibly frustrating. All right, so let's go ahead and reset that. And give the next game a shot here. All right, adventure. We'll go, we, everybody see that. Let's go with something people know. Asteroid. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we all know asteroids. All right, we're going to start left and start. Now, one of the rules of asteroids is don't move. <laughs> you want to try to stay in the middle as much as you can. The thing about Atari is when you push the joystick up, you move. That's the thrust. And when you push it down, it's hyperspace, which more and more likely than not gets you killed in asteroids. So, yeah, not too bad. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> All right, so let's reset that one. All right, guys, so I'm going to do something interesting for this one. Now, Circus Atari, you guys will remember, is basically just you moving a uh, seesaw back and forth and bouncing the guys up to get the balloons. But I've played this game a lot. So you've heard my daughter in the background being, you know, kind of a smarty pants about old guy games. So I'm going to pass the control to my daughter. Now, you can't see her because she's being shy. And I'm going to start this game for her, and we're going to let her try Circus Atari. Hang on a second here. There we go. Now, the idea is move left and right, and hit your fire button when you're ready, and it will drop a guy down, or shoot a guy out, I should say. All right, you got you ready? And here we go. There he is. Okay, that's dead. Let's not be dead. Let's try to not be dead. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. There you go. You'll get it. You'll get it. All right, here we go. It's all right. A little challenging. There you go. You got one. That, but lucky for you, that was the hard one. Let's try a different game. Let's try a different game. All right, let me put you on a different game. So let's go here. Let's put you on... Uh, oh, let's see, how about, ah, frogs and flies is pretty, oh, jungle hunt, that's what we're going to do, all right, you can swing the rope back and forth to speed yourself up, you push the fire to jump to the next rope, okay, so you swing the rope left to right, and you want to jump onto that rope, there you go, and you want to jump at the max point this direction, there you go. All right, there we go. Hey, she's getting the hang of this, guys. That's two for two. Oh, yeah. Oh, someone's got the hang of this right off the bat. Now, she's never played this, guys. This is actually probably one of her first experiences with an Atari. That's mostly my fault. You know, those old game systems I build uh, actually have all the Atari games. You think I would have showed it to you by now. Wow, she's doing really good. About to get to the water part. I believe there's uh, two more jumps for the water part. Let's see. Maybe three. All right. Now, you want to swim around and just dodge the alligators. But you don't want to dive too long or you'll run out of breath. So you got to keep going up for air. Now, you can hit your fire button and stab a knife. But the odds of killing the alligators are pretty low. I always die. You gotta hit them right in the mouth. All right, doing good. <laughs> what do you think? Does this compare to the games of today? Um, it's like Minecraft. Yeah, <laughs> Minecraft. I used to joke with her that hey, Minecraft. Hey, you did get one. That Minecraft was what we tried to get away from, you know. And uh, it's strange how it came full 
Serpent would announce a hugely popular game with terrible graphics. All right. Hey, you got another one. Right, you should be coming to the end here pretty quick. Oh, yeah, she's alligator crazy now. She's ready to do some killing. All right. Jump over the boulders, and if they're bouncing, you can duck. Yeah, you just pull down the duck. You'll see big boulders come bouncing for that. There you go. You're doing good. Oh, scovish! This is exactly like the game from Cool Math. Yes, like Cool Math. <laughs> okay, when it comes, you can oh, you, you duck those. Yeah. You can jump them, but you got to be dead on exactly accurate, or you die. Yeah, there you go. And mm -hmm. duck. See, yeah, like when it hits the ground, you just duck. Yeah, or just like if you stop and duck, you'll duck. The next stage is the last stage. It's actually pretty easy the first time. Okay. Now all you got to do on the next stage is jump over this guy and get to the other side. So you got to wait till he's on the ground. Oh, and back to the beginning. All right. Cool. All right, guys. So we'll take a look at a couple more games that are on this. So what do you think about uh, gaming in 8-bit again? Pretty cool? It is like Minecraft. It is like Minecraft. Yeah, you're right. Scrap Minecraft are. with worse graphics. Yeah, probably so. All right. Now, in this game, each one of these little planets represents kind of like a universe. All right, we're going to go into this one down here. And it'll open up another world once you run into it. Now the idea is to kill everything and then get out again. But as you can see, that's easier said than done. All right, so I want to check. You know, it makes me wonder, speaking of which, if Lunar Lander is on this. Let's see if it is. That was actually one of my favorites. That may not have actually been an Atari game. I'll have to look into it and see. Oh, look, Pong. Anybody out there play that? Oh, Space Invaders, the original. You know we got to do that, guys. I had quite a system on this when I was younger and could literally play it endlessly. But that was a lot of years ago, probably 1979. All right, let's see what we can do. Yeah, you used to be able to carve through the base and just shoot through the base to give yourself some uh, a little bit of cover. Oh, well, that's nice. Nice shot. All right, so Space Invaders works well. All right, let's go ahead and reset that. By the way, there is a reset button up there, guys. I'm just using the reset on the controller for, for hitting that. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Starship. Another one I used to play, if I can remember how. Well, that wasn't good. Let's try that again. As you can see, you've got little reticles here, and you're shooting at the ships before they run into you. Ah, the days of these kind of graphics. It looks like a little bit like a Klingon battle cruiser. Not bad. All right, so let's go for another game here. Yeah, some of these I could play forever. So, all right. Now this game is one of my favorites, but I don't know how well it's going to translate without the paddle. So we're going to find out here. All right, and start. All right, so there it is. Oh, you know what? And the fact that it's four players, I have to set that to uh, there. Let's try that. That should be all. Yeah, there we go. All right, the idea was you can hold the ball by holding the button down. Then the idea was you shoot it at them, and the idea is to kill their warlord. And there was a, a pretty good strategy for that, if you can get a hold of the ball. You just go to the corner and let them make the mistake of trying to get, oh, dog it, there we go. There, now he's down. Now we're going to do the same with the blue guy. Yes, by the way, what you're saying is 
Exactly. They actually will kill themselves if you're careful. Oh, no, you don't. All right. Kill. This is way easier with power. All right, here we go. Shoot down there. Yeah. I think it's going to be me and the blue guy. What do you think? All right, so we're going to do a little bit of reflexive action here. Make them fight each other. Ah, oh, no, not that way. There we go. Uh-oh. we got to guard that spot now. That's my weak spot. More in that area, and I am toast. All right, there we go. Oh, and down I go. All right, so pretty cool, guys. I, that uh, that actually was quite a bit of fun. Uh, there's a bunch of games on here I could play for quite a while. Sword Fight was another really good one. Um, terrible graphics, but just such a fun game to play. So, all right, well. I know this was a little different than my normal format. Um, actually, I want to do a lot more of these kind of things. I want to do more game reviews. Um, and I want to show you guys some of the games that I actually do play. Uh, and we'll do that here shortly, as a matter of fact. You might have noticed, and I know Stumpy can't quite see it, but I moved the Vicberry right over here to clear up a little bit more room to play. So the other thing I definitely want to do, and probably on the next video we do videos for games, I will, uh, is show you some of my favorite Commodore games. Um, and those games I could get into for hours. I mean, you know, uh, Mule and uh, Impossible Mission and, and all those games, they, just, they will literally consume me for hours. Uh, the old text games, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I don't know how well that would translate out for a video, but um, it'd be fun to play. So, All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this. A little different than my normal format, uh, but I got something else coming up real quickly I think you're going to get a kick out of, definitely. So. If you don't mind, smash that like and subscribe down there. I do appreciate it. And the Patreon is active. Uh, in fact, I think I've got my first Patreon supporter, which is really great. So um, eventually, we get a couple more of those. I'm going to put up a, a link at the bottom with a couple of the names if they want them on there just to let people know that they're doing it. So thank you so much, and we will see you soon. Have a great week.